Hi, and welcome to a very special co-working, a podcast about what what makes co-working special. And this month, we're welcoming Pauline Russell from Coworkies. Uh, what I love more than community is community of community, meaning a community about bringing together community builders. And that's exactly what uh, Pauline and Coworkies are doing. Uh, Pauline, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, Fanny. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy we are finally able to make it happen. It's uh, really yeah. nice to be on a very special court. Thank you so much. And uh, I was saying that I love community of community, and that's what I believe co-working is doing, because it's not a co-working space, but it's a community of co-working spaces. Uh, when did you start Coworkies and why did you start uh, a community of community, as I said, and not just your own co-working space, which both are amazing, but why did you choose that? Yeah, that's a great question. So the story of Coworkies goes back to 2015. Um, at the time, I was the chief happiness officer of a co-working space in Berlin. Uh, the co-working space that I was running was uh, focused on early stage startups. Um, and this is where I met Dimita, who became uh, my partner and my uh, and the co-founder of Coworkies. Uh, at the time, he was working. He was a member of the space. He was working for a startup accelerator. Um, seeing the space every day, you know the interactions that were happening, how members were connecting, the impact they were creating for each other, this knowledge sharing, uh, information being passed on, companies merging, etc. Uh, we started to get really curious to understand what kind of impact co-working was having on people who had the chance to somehow be a part of the co-working community, but also on cities who had the chance to have co-working spaces. And I think this question about positive impact of uh, co-working has been our compass for the last nine years that we've been doing co-workies now. Um, but at the time when we asked ourselves this question, we thought, okay, What's, you know, Berlin is an amazing playground. There were so many co-working spaces serving so many different communities. We thought, how about we go out and explore other co-working spaces that are not necessarily supporting the same type of communities as we are. So we went around, we interviewed other co-working teams. Uh, we talked to co-working founders to understand how they ended up uh, creating a co-working space for parents, how they ended up co creating a co-working space for musicians or many other examples. And to be honest with you, I think we had around 20 to 25 visits of co-working spaces at the time. And it was really interesting to realize how all those stories of like why they started such co-working space for such community uh, was already very different from the co-working space we were a part of. And after interviewing so many people, we took the chance of an event in our co-working space uh, first. The weekly breakfast was open to everybody in the city. Um, you could just come in, network with our community uh, free of charge. The, the, the idea behind was just to extend the impact we were creating in the space to people who are not a part of it, but might be interested in somehow getting in touch with it. And at one of the Friday breakfasts, we said, okay, uh, we just did a big co-working tour of Berlin co-working spaces. This is what we discovered. And interestingly enough, that day there was uh, Davide, uh, who is the founder of Talent Garden, a big uh, co-working chain from Italy. And he was at the breakfast mm -hmm. because he was coming to Berlin to look at co-working spaces, just like we did. And he told us, oh, guys, you should come to Milan. We have a, a co-working space there that's um, also kind of focused to edu uh, on education, which we hadn't seen in Berlin. And we kind of took his invitation and we said, OK, let's just book a flight and let's just go. And the reason why I'm saying this to you is because basically since 2015, we've been constantly on the road exploring co-working spaces to understand their positive impact. But that has um, also highly um, shaped what we do. And so over the last nine years, we visited over 550 co-working spaces across 64 cities. So we had the chance to go all the way from Tokyo in Japan to New York, always with the same question in mind. How is your space positively impacting the place where you're at? And how is it positively supporting uh, the community, not just the internal community, but the extended community around you? Um, and what what shaped coworkers, I should say, just to answer, I'm giving you the full story this way, you know. Um, what shaped coworkers is that basically we thought that 
we had met like so many co-working spaces but when we started already that the secret ingredient to co-working spaces were their teams mm -hmm. and so while we were talking to co-working spaces and seeing how their teams were making a difference in the day-to-day -day of other people we thought okay how about we build a place where people can find jobs in co-working spaces and so the idea of Co-work is as a product, which is a job board and a place where you can find work opportunities in co-working spaces, really came out of the traveling and of us encountering so many teams and so many uh, people around the world, which we thought, you know, uh, were incredibly passionate, but also uh, with whom we wanted to support in their own co-working careers. So in a nutshell, that's like the, the, the story of co is And just to, to give a full perspective on what we are doing today, um, everything we do with, with co-workers revolves around making co-working better. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea of having a platform that helps people find jobs yeah. in co-working spaces also contributed to our mission of like supporting the industry in bettering mm -hmm. itself. So you started co-working in 2015. You already know you were working as a co-working space at that time. So what was your first experience yeah. with co-working? How did you get to know about co-working? <laughs> so, I used to work um, in Paris mm -hmm. before moving to Berlin. I used to work in communication. Uh, my main client was L'Oréal, so there was nothing related to co-working. Um, after a few years uh, working in communication, I got really tired mm -hmm. and I thought I need something else for my life. Uh, I had a chance to be European, so I moved actually to um, Berlin. I found another job back then in a communication agency. Still, it was a really bad experience for me. And I said to myself, I really need a change. Yeah. Maybe marketing and communication is not for me. I need to look for something yeah. else. And while browsing a job board, uh, I actually came across this ad that was saying chief happiness officer. It was my very first encounter. I didn't know what was a chief happiness officer. I was just triggered by you know the title. I thought it was really nice. Yeah. And it was in a co-working space. And I also didn't know what was a co-working space. Um, but I read, the, I read the ad and I really thought, this is something that looks like me. Uh, it, it feels like something I can do. And so I decided yeah. to apply. Um, and I still uh -huh. remember, it's funny, I still remember the, the, the person who answered to me was like, oh, we are at the end of the recruiting process. Um, I'm not sure we, we, we have still, uh, we have a lot of good candidates. And I was like, oh no, please don't discard me because you are at the end. Please, if you like my CV, invite me to come in and, and let's have a chat. And she said, okay, if you can come today, just come. So I rushed out of work. I was like, okay, I'm going, I have a, I invented the story, I said, I'm going. Um, and, and I went there and actually I still remember the first time I entered a co-working space, I had goosebumps um, of excitement. I had like, a, wow, what is this place? You know, it felt incredible, like something I had never seen before because all my previous experiences in the workplace were very, um, how can I say? They were just, you know, uh, the mold of what you express the workplace to be. Desks, chairs, go to work, work, go home, that's it. And in that co-working mm. space, there were already so many different things that were triggering my attention of like a ping pong table, a cafe, event space, whatever. I was like, wow, this looks really, really cool. Yeah, no, that's super interesting. And that's why you were working and learning about co-working and hearing all those stories. And then you decided in 2015 to create co-working. What, what did spark it? Uh, you were talking about an event during which you were meeting other co-working manager. Was it when you thought about starting co-workies or? I think it was a gradual process. Uh, we knew mm. we wanted to build something for the co-working world. Uh, at first we thought of different types of products, but we didn't want to create something that were already existing. So for instance, building a co-working okay. software, we're like, it's already there. Why should we do that? And I think co-workers came out of like, yeah, really the soaking everything we were learning from co-working teams, from seeing the spaces for ourselves, um, and also from seeing people who, you know, we wanted somehow to support. And we mm -hmm. understood already back then that, you know, finding the right people to work in a co-working space was so challenging. I remember back in 2015, at the very early days of the job board, we had conversations with spaces in Barcelona who were saying every time they were putting an ad for community manager, they were receiving CVs for people who thought it was for social media. And it's funny because yeah. we are nine years down the road and it's still the case. We still have mm -hmm. clients of ours who use the job board and they say when they post an ad about community manager, now they mention in the title, not social media, just because, you know, it's, it's still a very 
not well known type mm -hmm. of industry. So we thought that through our work sure. and through what mm -hmm. we believe in and what we wanted to achieve with Coworkies, we could really support this educational part of like telling people the kind of jobs you can find in coworking spaces, why mm -hmm. they're important. Yeah, no. And one interesting thing you said is we. So meaning you already had a partner, a business partner at that time to yeah. to do this together. How how did you meet each other and how did you decide to go for it together? Um, so we met in the co-working space. Uh, he was a member. Um, I, I was um, he was working for a startup accelerator. So I would say Dimitar had the entrepreneurial fiber much more ingrained in me, maybe uh, much more ingrained sorry, in him than in me. Um, and I think it, it's true, again, conversations and our genuine curiosity about discovering what co-working is all about. Um, and also a match of energy, a match of like uh, skills, a very uh, kind of like uh, um, we kind of like complete each other in skills. And um, so I think when, when we thought about it, about it and at the, at the very beginning, we were three. Um, we, we thought, OK, we had a, a good combo of, of, of sets and skill sets. Uh, to push the product forward, so we just decided to go for it. Wow, no. Yeah, so finding, again, like you said, finding the right people in a co-working, to work in the co-working is important. And when you start something, finding the right partner is as important. So, uh, yeah, it's all about people in the end, isn't it? Yeah, and like we, the, our story is the story of so many other people in co-working spaces. It's insane, like, you know, yeah. Uh, we have so many people we've met to these days. I mean, you can mm -hmm. imagine after seeing over 500 coworking spaces, we've met, I don't know, maybe over 2,000 people in the coworking world. Uh, how many people got married? How many people met in the coworking space, uh, found their business partner, uh, had kids together? So, you know, it's like, it's a social space at the end of the day. That's that's also what's so magical about it is that it goes way beyond the purpose of working. You have the chance to meet other people and oftentimes, because co-working spaces somehow do some sort of curation, and by curation, I don't mean like, oh, they are like niche, or there are some who are niche, but I mean, in, in terms of like the content they provide, there are some events that will attract people with similar interests. So, you know, it's also very natural for connections to happen in co-working spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. True, and you were talking about one space specialized in education, so they would attract people interested in that topic or working in the education industry and so on and so forth uh, for each and every space. So that was yeah. about the beginning of Coworkies and how you came to be. Uh, what yeah. is it today? So I understand you still do the job board and you do many yeah. other things. You still keep on meeting co-working co uh, managers, why did you decide yes. to go on the road and to actually see them face to face? Yeah, so earlier I was telling you that we have a mission. Our mission is to make co-working mm -hmm. better. And, we under, and this, again, is our compass. And in everything we do, we always ask ourselves, the content we create, the people we uh, highlight or whatever we do, um, is this helping the industry in getting better? If the answer is yes, we do it. So today, Coworkies is a few things. Um, we, we support the industry in getting better by, as you said, uh, just before having an, a, a job board so people can hire uh, and promote their job ads in their coworking spaces. We also do um, a lot of content. So something I'm mentioning now uh, is that after traveling around the world for so, for so long, we also released a book called Around the World in 250 Coworking Spaces. Um, the book came out about two years ago, but we still use it to this day to educate people, to pass on the knowledge we've gained while traveling to so many different communities. So we work a lot with universities. We work also with co-working teams. Uh, we work with companies to really help them understand what co-working is today and also help them understand that it's not just for startups and freelancers anymore, that there are plenty of communities around the world that benefit from the model of co-working. We do trainings. So as you said, uh, we work with uh, um, co-working teams themselves, particularly community managers. Uh, the realization for us mm -hmm. to support community managers was that when we see them in their own environment, we realize that they take care of everyone, but who takes care of them? So we decided to support them mm -hmm. by doing in-person events like retreats. So, so far we've been doing yeah. two community managers retreats. There was one in Greece, one in Morocco, where the idea is really for them to reconnect with themselves, with the purpose of their job, 
um, remind them mm -hmm. how important they are to the success of their communities and their co-working spaces. Uh, so for four days, we do a lot of like exercises, workshops, di discussions around the importance of what they are and who they are in their own co-working spaces. And then the last thing we do to help the industry get better is uh, we do consulting. So we help co-working teams with challenges they have, whether it is in operations, uh, community management, community strategy, hiring as well, um, um, anything really related to the business. Uh, we help them by plug and play kind of. So we become kind of like part of their team for a bit to solve a challenge they have and then we go. Uh, but we also, as I said, work with universities and companies in doing presentations and workshops about what's co-working. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's a lot of work. Uh, you still two, yes. two partners from the beginning or? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We are still two. Um, we work with a lot of uh, people depending on the project. So we always involve other people we love to work with. But the core team of co is Dimitar and myself, yes. Wow, that, that's amazing because it's so, already as a board, it's a lot. Day on the road to meet people is a lot. Yes. And all the media, all the content you're producing, plus the training, the consultancy, it's a lot of work. Yeah, it is, but we love it. I think it's just, um, it just combines, or, you know, it's just matches, it, everything com combines to get a really 360 perspective on what we are doing and how we are supporting people in, you know, understanding how co-working can work for them. So I think it is a lot. I'm not going to lie. We are very busy all the time. Um, but it's also very rewarding as a journey. You know, like uh, you learn so much from yeah. those human interactions. Uh, it's totally different if I would meet you in person than what we are doing now online. Um, the interactions mm -hmm. are always very different. So that's also why for us mm -hmm. traveling um, is, is essential because seeing people in their own co-working spaces is always different than seeing them at events, you know. Yeah, that's true. And um, so that's what it looks like now. Uh, do you have, what would it look like in the future? Do you have uh, some plans? Do you have uh, some visions, uh, something concrete, something more fluffy you would like to do next? So in the future, I mean, everything is about furthering our mission. So how can we keep on making mm -hmm. co-working getting better and better every day. Um, we are actually on each of the different pillars I talked about, whether it is the job board, the content, uh, trainings, or uh, even uh, consulting, uh, we are furthering that. So it means we, with the job board, we are developing uh, really interesting new features, which we will release very soon. I can't talk yet about it, um, <laughs> but soon you guys will know. <laughs> about the book, we are actually working on a second one at the moment, uh, which will be a little bit different, but uh, that's also in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, we are planning more retreats for community managers as well, and um, that's coming up. And we have also onboarded new clients for consulting, so that's also very exciting. Um, and I think in the future, uh, that's, that's really all what it is about for us, to keep on furthering our mission, keep on supporting people, in building great experiences in co-working spaces or in making their own understanding of co-working. And do you want to hire more people to make co-working bigger and to have also your own place because your your first mission is about finding the right people? Or would you like to keep it boutique and a small team that knows very well uh, your different clients and maybe keep being the two of you with maybe one more people, but that's it. No, we definitely, when the time is right, we would love to grow the team. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we, we've mm. had, uh, we always have a lot of uh, people, as I said, uh, we work with and we love collaboration. So I think for us, growing mm -hmm. the team is something we really want to do. Uh, we just need to do it right. Uh, so whenever the time will be right, for sure, uh, we would love to, to grow the team and be able also to have all those four pillars, maybe, you know, have the people support us in growing them individually as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm thinking since uh, your first mission was about hiring the right people, do you have any advice about that? What's, what's the right people to work as a community manager? It's a great question. And actually, the answer is that there is no right profile to be a community manager. Uh, I think the, mm. we, we've met community managers who are introverts, some are extroverts. Um, I think it, to be a 
community manager and to enjoy being a community manager, you need to like to support people. So if you have that thing in you where you like to help others, I think you would be a great community manager. Um, because basically throughout your day, you're going to have so many encounters with so many different people who are going to come at you for very different reasons. So if you like that human elements and the, the, the human connections and support, I think you might give a try to, to being a community manager. And I would say, um, obviously, there's so many different co-working spaces around the world. So if you are watching mm. this now or later and you are thinking about becoming a community manager, First, we have a lot of articles on our blog where uh, we interviewed community managers about their kind of like a career trajectory. So you can read those to get inspired, but also look at different job ads. Don't look at just one co-working space um, because obviously you need to find the right place for you to blossom in. So make sure that you give yourself the chance to apply to different jobs and go to different co-working spaces as well to understand how they function, what they can bring to you. Um, because obviously each of them is different. So there is one for you. You just need to find the right one. Yeah, no, very interesting. And there are many different kind of jobs at the working space. We've been talking a lot about the community side uh, because it's all about people, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And there are also other people working on other aspects of the co-working space. So. Of course. So obviously community managers are kind of like the heart of the space because they are kind of like the ones who provide the programming, the support to members, the experience, but you have operations, uh, which is a huge thing in co-working spaces, how to make sure that the space runs smoothly. Uh, you have HR, obviously. Uh, you also have events. Uh, events is a very big thing in co-working spaces. They have event venues, event organization, planning, execution. Uh, so that's also a big thing. And then Obviously, each brand has different size, so some co-working teams are smaller than others. When the teams are bigger, you might have communication and marketing department. Uh, you might have real estate department, finance department. This is really depending on the co-working space. But yes, obviously, there are plenty of jobs uh, in, in co-working spaces. And again, if people um, are watching us now and are curious to find their next uh, job adventure, uh, they can check coworkies.com. We have, at the moment, quite a lot of exciting work opportunities. But they can also reach out to me for uh, support because we know so many people that we always love to connect the dots as well. Yeah, uh, I'm wondering, you've been talking about how you're traveling a lot. And I guess you're traveling a lot in Europe or do you also travel uh, in other continents as well? So prior to the pandemic, we were traveling, I would say, a mix. Uh, half, of it, uh, half of the time in Europe, half of the time outside of Europe. Uh, since the pandemic, I think we've been much more uh, in Europe. Yeah. And, and also, we've been also going um, to some countries outside of Europe, but a lot of it has been in Europe. Um, but we, of course, mm -hmm. always look for opportunities to go and explore uh, co-working environments outside uh, of Europe. Um, so, yeah, it's a mix, I would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, because it takes time to travel. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it takes a lot of time to adjust, uh, to uh, deep soak into the culture. And obviously, you know, for instance, when we went to Japan, you don't go to Japan for three days. You you stay there for a while, just the time to, because you don't know when you will be back there, you know? So you just mm -hmm. want to make sure that you take the time to see what you can. And so, yeah, it, it, it is it, it does take time, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we're going to, we're coming to the end bit by bit. Uh, before we close up, is there anything uh, we didn't cover and you would like to add? I would just say if anyone is watching us uh, and want to support our mission, never be shy to reach out to us. Uh, we love uh, being connected to others. We love uh, co-working stories. Um, so whether you want to work with us, uh, contribute to what we are doing, um, just please don't be shy and uh, connect with me on, on LinkedIn. Yeah, and that's my next question. If people want to know more about co-working, about what, what, you, what you, you're doing or contact you, where can yeah. they can uh, contact you as easiest? So I think LinkedIn is uh, my personal LinkedIn. If they want to talk to me directly, no, yeah, they mm -hmm. can definitely uh, add me. Um, and then if they want to keep up with co-workers, we are very active on LinkedIn uh, and also on Instagram. Uh, on LinkedIn, we have mm -hmm. a newsletter called uh, Corekis Jobs Gazette, uh, which goes out every week where we share a lot of what we do. 
And on, on Instagram, we share also a lot of our traveling, uh, a lot of what we learn from co-working spaces. So um, there, and we also have um, a readers club uh, connected to our book where people can uh, further their um, learning about co-working spaces. So yeah, there are plenty of resources, but I would say LinkedIn and Instagram are great places to start with. Thank you. I will add them in the comments so that people can yeah. find them easily. Uh, well, thank you so much for being with us today. It was lovely to hear about your world journey and all the travels you're doing. Uh, it's really, it's really heartwarming. Yeah, thanks a lot, Fanny, for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure to chat with you. I hope we'll get the chance to meet in person very soon. Yeah, me too. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye. See you. Bye.